Hey everybody, it's Selena from Fear Paranormal. Thanks for joining me with Close to Death. I have a really cool guest this evening that I've been excited to uh, speak with for quite a while, a Mr. Stephen Lachance. How you doing tonight, Stephen? I'm doing good. Really, I am. <laughs> well, that's good. I know you've had a, a rough uh, couple of days, and I'm really sorry for that. Thank you. It has, uh, been, it has been rough. But you know what? The thing is, is you know, you, know, you can put everything into context and understand what life's about and how life works and you get through it, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Well, for those of uh, my audience who don't know anything about you, which I can't imagine who wouldn't, uh, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? Oh, God, you're going to make me do that. Just a little bit. Because there's, I know, a lot. Just pick out the, the really fine points. The fine points? <laughs> Well, uh, let's see. I, I moved into haunt. I, I wasn't involved in any of this until 2001, when I moved into the haunted house, and everybody probably knows it's the Union Screaming House. Um, and uh, that's how I got involved because uh, it was a horrible haunting uh, that took us through a whole bunch of bad things. Um, I've done different things. I've written the book The Uninvited, which was about that haunt. I have written a book called Crazy, which is about the uh, truck stop in. Uh, Bill Ridge, Missouri, on Route 66. I'm listening to myself in the background here. Yeah, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting it. Okay. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, I, I was in the Booth Brother films, uh, Children of Ray. I was also a writer on that film. I was in The Possessed. I also did some uh, different work for them in, like, uh, Children of the Grave 2. I did some location work. Um, I did I directed my own film called The Morris Mill Project about the Morris Mill Hotel on Morris Mill, Missouri. Um, you can have seen me on Mike and Juliet, CNN, ABC, NBC, Universal, Sci-Fi, A Haunting on Discovery, <laughs> uh, Fear House. Um, I've been on radio stations, major radio stations across the U.S., Canada, and the Outer Pacific Rim. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I could continue, but no, I've been really lucky. I've been really lucky, and I've had quite uh, quite a career, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, and I've been able to help a lot of people by doing the stuff I do. So that's most important. Well, I know that when I met you at, at HHL in Jefferson, that was the first time I'd met you, and um, I, I've heard a lot of speakers. And I, I said this before on a couple other shows that I've been th to a lot of paracons, a lot of conferences. And I've heard a lot of speakers, and usually I'm like, yeah, about five or ten minutes in, I'm out of there, you know. Uh, with you, I was very uh, taken in and definitely drawn into the story and completely amazed that you actually lived through that. Uh, I don't know that I would have been uh, in anything but a straitjacket after what you went through. <clears throat> I remember but when I started going, when I first started going out speaking, so Lena, my mom said to me, you know, she gave me some advice. And um, you'll hear me, you know, I always say that. I said, when you hear me say, Mama says I'm like Forrest Gump. Uh, <laughs> but she did. She gave me some advice. She goes, you know, go out there. She goes, if you feel like you need to tell this and you feel like you need people to hear it, she goes, you're going to have people that are maybe not going to believe it. Um, she goes, and you don't, shouldn't expect people to believe it or understand it. She goes, but what you need to expect is stand up there, tell like it was, tell the truth, and everything else takes its course. You yeah. know, so that's but, what I do. And you do a great job of it because, um, <laughs> and it was funny because you wanted to take me in your luggage because of all the uh, facial expressions. <laughs> I kind of can't hide my my thoughts. <laughs> my <face. laughs> I could read. Well, the funny thing is, is I got to the point where I, you know, and this was a big room, you guys. We had a lot of people in this room. And I, I, I zoned in on her. 
and I, I'm watching her facial expressions, and I'm like, wow, I could tell every single thing, every emotion, every thought she was having. I'm like, man, I wish I could take this person with me, you know, because <laughs> I wish I could have audiences of Salinas, because there's sometimes you get the audiences where you look out and you're, you're not quite sure what they're thinking. But with you, man, you, you're an open book. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was awesome. <laughs> I was just like, holy crap. I was there, you know, the, the whole entire thing was totally had me you know drawn in and then when you actually showed emotion because it did affect your life i mean it 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 came out as the parent the protective parent i could di i could totally relate to that i would not know what i would do if my son was in need and i couldn't get to him uh, um, i know you become superhuman with strength sometimes when things like that happen so to even have that superhuman strength and still not be able to get to your child yeah, I don't know how I could deal with something like that. You know, the, I'm a the, very the, protective the, parent. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, is the, the, when that was going on, the, my daughter was screaming on the other side of the door, and I couldn't get in the door, for those of you that don't know. Um, and I was throwing my body against the door, and I'm a big guy, and the door wouldn't open. You know, and I, and I could hear my body thudding against the door, and I could hear her screaming. And, you know, and at some point I started hearing something else and I wasn't quite sure what I was hearing. And, you know, it was it was the realization that hit. And when I think back to it, I get to, it kind of shocks me. I want to talk about it, too. But I could hear I, I, the realization that it was my own screams I was hearing at one point um, kind of did me in, uh, you know, in, in, in the thought of. You know, people ask me, you know, what's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you in the paranormal? I've done a lot. Um, but that was the moment to hear my child, my child screaming and not being able to get to her. I mean, uh, I think that's every parent's nightmare. Yeah, I, it, it definitely would be mine because that's I totally related to you. And um, I mean, I just completely loved hearing you speak. And I'm like, from then on, I was like, oh, you got to have Stephen Lachance speak. I'm telling you right now. He's amazing. He had me from the get-go. And usually, like I said, I mean, I'm into what people are talking about, but sometimes with my ADD, I'm like, squirrel, you know, um, five or ten minutes in, I'm, I'm needing to do something else, and I couldn't actually leave. I had a table to work, which I hope Dave's not watching this, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> she was watching the table most of the day, Dave. <laughs> yeah, most of the day, I was all over that table. Um but yeah, uh, actually, I did better at HHL than I did anywhere else. So you know what? It's okay. I'm sure he won't mind. <laughs> um, but it was it was just the, the the horror of not only what your family went through, and I'm talking about the book The Uninvited, the, the Union House, and <clears throat> what you and, and others went through was just I, I just couldn't even imagine. Uh, and I like clowns. I mean, some people freak out about clowns, but that's kind of questionable now after. <laughs> After uh, what they went through, and uh, I'm not going to spoil clown, the book. Yeah, but the whole clown thing was uh, was really hard for me to take for a while, at first, you know, because you know I had this this child that's being chased by this thing, and uh, you know, um, in his description of it, you know, and it, it was it was like, well, how do I deal with this? How do I handle this? You know, because at first I got to tell you, I you know I was I was in in parental mode, which is. You know, all kids are afraid of the basement. All kids have this this thing where they're afraid of the dark. You know, so I, I thought that's what I was dealing with. But when I once I realized that wasn't what I was dealing with, the clown thing really, really, really had me going. And then I thought about it, and I thought, you know, he was afraid of clowns all of his life. Maybe this child is trying to put a face on something he can't explain. However, it comes to play later, as you know. Um, yeah. So it's almost like it, it took his fear and it let it loose. And when it let it loose, all hell broke loose. I mean, literally. Um, not for only my family, but others as well. Oh, yeah. And um, that's that's the thing that each family, and I couldn't believe that that guy would let families still move in there every single time. I'm like, Jesus Christ, is this guy like Satan himself? Why is he letting this family, these families with children move in here? No here's, a, he knows. here's a secret here's a secret that guy is actually a woman um because i put the original email on in the end of the book which you'll find out uh, uh -huh. i had to make an agreement that we, he would be a man in the book however we didn't change anything other than the fact of we took him, her and put him as him 
um, because we were never quite sure if this we were dealing with a male or a female. Um, she's kind of asexual in that way. I what mean, <laughs> right, right. You know, and I, I was I was doing and I did a college here at home. Um, at the beginning of the month, and, I, and I, I did the lecture and everything like I did for you guys, and I went and took questions, and I saw her sitting in the audience. Um, and I, you know, and I, I looked, and I said, I, I said, I said, I got to make sure I got enough time for questions. And I looked over, and I called her right away. I said, you, you know, knowing who it was, and she stood up, and people actually got to see that everything I said about her was true. She was there, and you know, and then the crowd turned on her. The crowd literally, physically turned on her and wanted to, you know, they, I, I was actually fearful that she was going to get harmed. This one girl went across the seats at her and they had to pull her back. You know, and, and the more that they fed her the anger, the more that she would smile and clap. You know, and it was like people got to see what I have been talking about for all of these years, that this woman is actually the lunatic that I said she was. And, you know, in one breath she would say, no, this didn't happen, and then she could say it in the other breath, and she'd say, well, it did. You know, and it was just it was, it was was just a crazy night, and I've never seen, I, I didn't have to, you know, I didn't. I didn't have to do anything. You know how my attitude, it is what it is, take it or leave it. You yeah. know, but this crowd wanted a piece of her. And what I didn't realize when it started, she had people in that audience that were, were victims of her. And um, the Ooh. rest of them lived, were obviously, they lived in the town, and they knew of the things that she was doing to people in their town. And this town got up and said no and went after her. I've never seen anything like it. Never seen anything uh -huh. like it. It was crazy. That is crazy. And from the Union House, um, you did say that, and I was listening to your show when you were on uh, Kim and Eric's show Friday. I did listen in. And I and I was pretty uh, interested in the near-death experience that you had, or actually that you actually died, possibly. No, I um, 38 seconds. back into my body everything hurt i mean from head to toe i i it was like falling from a building is the best way i could describe it in hitting my body back into it and with the moment that happened i had the thought i know why children cry when they're born it hurts and it took me a while to figure that out you know i was like why why that message you know because it was obviously a message and it was like why that message and then i finally figured it out was i had spent and all of my life going around because I've had a rough life and I don't I don't make no bones about it you know uh, you know I, I was left with three kids I had people there very close to me die you know this we've talked about a little bit of that um, mm -hmm. I had a sister that was very close to me die and it was all during that time I mean our generation dealt with a lot of death especially those of us that worked in the theater I became a very bitter man and I would walk around and I would be like you know um, poor me it was a lot of, always poor me, poor me this happened to me, poor me that happened to me, poor me I, I lived in a haunted house, poor me I got this going on. And the message finally hit me that, you know, what it was is, okay, we're going to let you live, live some more. But however, you better understand that life is going to hurt. And it's within that hurt that you feel that your soul is actually going to develop and grow. Um, it's not the good times, it's the bad times. You know, you should, embrace, you should embrace the bad as well as you embrace the good. Because uh, you're not, you, the person that you become, become out of the bad. I mean, just let's take the haunting, for example. Look at the person I became just because of that. You know, and how dare I have the right to go around and say, poor me. doesn't work. So, there you go. Yeah, that, that was, <laughs> I guess the, why that stood out when I listened to that the other night. Um, you know, I'm doing uh, this show. It started out as being all about near-death experiences. Mm -hmm. Well, then it... it Close to death can be about anything. It can be about anything to do with death. It can be about the paranormal or whatever. But when you said what you said right then, it, it hit me like when my mom said, you know, all the bad that I've been through, all the pain that I've been through has made me the person I am today. And I'm grateful for all that because I would never have learned exactly. anything. And, um, exactly. and it kind of just resonated with me because it sounded almost to the T of what my mom said uh, when she was alive was that. You know, because she had lupus and she suffered and she struggled and, you know, was always sick, but she never complained. And, you know, just 
I would be like, aren't you always angry about, because you're so sweet, and why are you having to go through all this? And she goes, you don't look at it like that, you know? God doesn't ever give you more than you can handle. And I'm like, well, sometimes exactly. I question that. <laughs> um, exactly. But it's true. God doesn't give you more than you can handle. And, you know, another thing my mama always said to me is, you know, he never promised you a rose garden. <laughs> yeah. Right? True. True. You know? But, you know, that's yeah. how you get, you know. But the thing is, is if you start the poor me stuff and you put that kick me sign on your back, you yeah. can wear that kick me sign on your back, people are going to line up to kick you. Because <laughs> negative that's why, attracts why, negative. <laughs> right. You, you got it. You got it. <laughs> You know, so I was the master of the kick me sign for so finally it took me to die to finally say, Hey, I'm done being kicked. You stop. You know? Exactly. I'm gonna start kicking back now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was also um pretty intrigued about uh when I read a little bit about the zombie road. Um and when you took people out there and you really didn't think you were expecting much, uh and then things were happening left and right. Mm-hmm. I've I've never even heard of Zombie Road until Friday night. Really? That's that's how new I am, I guess. Uh, I'm not a better you, paranormal. You got to watch Children of the Grave, and you you can see the the footage we got from there. But it was I I wanted to go look at uh, an urban legend and prove it to be just that an urban legend, and that's what I thought I was doing. So I take the team out, and uh, mind you, we just had lived through probably one of the most horrific hauntings of, of all time, you know, <laughs> you know, really, I mean, you know, the Union haunting in a lot of ways makes Amityville look like a walk in the park. Yes, um, it does. <laughs> you know, and everybody was taking stuff home with them, they, and we all had stuff happening to us, so it was like, well, let's go for this walk through the woods, it'd be fun, we'll ride a little train at the end, you know, it'd be good, you know, it's supposed to be Pooh's 100 Acre Wood, and it turned into the Blair Witch Project, you know, <laughs> and all of a sudden it was like, Go, you know, in the realization of the fact that, okay, we might have a run here of everywhere we go being something else. But, you know, the the zombie road thing was just the amount of shadow figures. And, you know, and they were just, oh, my God, I can't even explain to you what it's like to get down into the middle of those woods in the middle of the night and having, you know, 15, 20 shadow figures step out from behind the trees and stand there and watch you. <laughs> I mean, really, and you know, we have we got this on thermal cam too. By the way, um, actually, that's what we strive for. And I don't know, uh, you know, my team name Fear. It's got two different actual meanings to it. Right. <laughs> um, uh, yes, there is er- for everything a reason, but also if something scares me, I'm gonna run uh, right. if it's that bad. But that's what I strive to see. I would love to see apparitions just standing there. I, I'd probably be frozen, but I would, I'd love to see it. I remember when I saw my best friend's doppelganger, uh, I, I didn't really think it was a doppelganger and, and right. until chased after it and it was, poof, gone. Um, when, and then he was upstairs. Is, <laughs> the thing is with Zombie Road is, you know, you're so surrounded, you can't run. You know, if you run, you're going to get lost in the woods, and that's going to be a disaster. Or you're going to fall down a ravine and end up in the Merrimack River. Or, you know, I mean, there's a number of things that could happen to you. So, I mean, it's definitely not a place you want to run. But even if you wanted to run, they really literally surround you. So, and you feel them. That's the weird thing, is you feel them watching you, and they just stand there. And you can see them sway a little bit, and they're only four foot tall. Oh, wow. Creepy, huh? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> that they're only that they're that they're only that high. It's really funny because most of the time when we do get activity in places and we're trying to do EMF or um, any kind of equipment type thing, it usually happens at mid at mid level. Right. You know, like you usually if it's I knew normally don't get anything real high unless it's a light giving off EMF. Right. But normally it's like kind of like almost chest high to me mm-hmm. um and it's kind of weird i was wondering that because we we've, we've dropped it low to the ground we've brought it up and it's normally just right in that area so that's weird that you say that they were four foot high <laughs> they were about four foot high you know and the question we had was you know with the history of the road and how many children that have drowned in the merrimack or, you know there was a bus accident you know are we dealing with children there or are we dealing with something else is the question you know um 
I would like to think it's something else because the, the thought of that being so many children is too horrific to, to, to handle, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I know that when we came out of Zombie Road, the night that we filmed, I mean, everybody was just quiet. I mean, we were silent because um, there was really, you know, the feeling of there was nothing we could do, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, and, and for some reason it's more emotional um, when children are involved. Because I, I do recall um, when we were at Villisca Axe Murder House and we were having contact actually um, via a psychic on the phone with, with three of the, um, the small spirits that were there, the children that were there, and they were communicating that they were scared of a, a big shadow figure. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just so sad that they're stuck as it is, or maybe not stuck, I should say, but kind of are, you know, the kids are no, kind of, actually. <laughs> they kind of are stuck in that home and they're, they're being held there by, by a shadow figure. That's not so nice. And I, I got really emotional because, um, I, I got that m m mother protective thing came out, I guess. And right. I, I actually confronted the shadow person, you know, I was like, how could you do this to children? Um, and it kind of just took me over because I, I got really angry about it. Um, but it's more emotional, I guess, when you're a parent and there's a, ch and there's a child spirit there that's just kind of stuck. It just pulls at my heartstrings a little bit more um, than, a, you know, an older person that had had a full life. And, you know, I don't know. It just it, children get to me a lot more. Children get to me, too. You know, there, I, I, there, I was at one location with um, uh, Mr. Age one time. And uh, we were we were investigating, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in the fabric of the air, a baby started crying. And I, you know, him and I both were about ready to climb the walls, you know, to find this baby. I mean, right. you know, the, the the sound of you know, I can't, I can't think of anything more horrible to hear in a haunting in the dark than a baby crying. I mean, you, it's, it, it hits you on such a different emotional level. And I think that's the, the important thing is, is what we're talking about is most people think hauntings are, you know, they're going to scare you, they're going to frighten you. But most of the time, the really good hauntings and the really good evidence when you get it, it hits you on an emotional level more so than it does a, a frightening level. I, you know, I think, I think, you know, a haunting is made up of probably 2% fear and 98% emotion. Yeah, exactly. Um, the emotion that you feel like, let me say, where did you feel, not just the Union House, but other than the Union House, where did you get uh, the most activity besides Zombie Road? I mean, besides Zombie Road, I, 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 I've had some good ones, Morrisville's a good one, but um, unfortunately the, the old house, the old South Pittsburgh Hospital, which just uh, closed out. Um, that, that, that building, uh, was a tremendous amount of activity. I actually got thrown against the wall in that building. Um, you know, and it's a shame that it's no longer going to be there and available for us investigators to go and try our wares because it was, it was, a, it was a very, very active building. Well, I did hear today that they are, uh, honoring investigations and are trying to keep it open. Good, uh, good. They're trying to get to the bottom of what happened, um, and they're honoring everyone's uh, reservations that they, they had some kind of big special in August or something like that to, for the 2014 year. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the people were gone. But they're trying to figure it out and, uh, and kind of get it straightened out so where everybody can go and still investigate it. And I have heard about people getting thrown against the wall there and stuff like that. Pretty, pretty physical activity at that place. It's pretty, it can be pretty physical. And Selena, they will, they uh, I, will, I think that's what a cool thing about that building is. They will, they will honor your reservations as long as you have a PayPal receipt. Oh, there you go. There you go. Hopefully you got PayPal receipts, folks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had, I had uh, gotten to go there just quite yet. Uh, the, the one place that I saw uh, a shadow figure, actually, we caught on camera and on video is at Old Yoakum uh, Hospital in Yoakum, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was pretty crazy. Um, anything on video is extremely hard to catch that I, I, I have found out. And I, I know you had a friend back when you were uh, helping uh, Helen in the union house, uh, the EVP expert. And in the book, his name was Bill. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, 
I want to know his secret on how he's getting all those awesome EVPs. Uh, I talk about <laughs> <laughs> if it's the truth. You know, that's that's one thing. When I first started out, I was EVP guy, and um, I, I would get them like crazy. You know, when I was in the union house, I would get them so frequently and so many that I never saved them. I just clear the recorder. <laughs> I mean, it was like it was like I just thought I would get them. You know. Um, but one of, one of the things that the realization I make, and you hear people do this all the time, but before this they didn't, was the realization I made was, um, and this is back in like 04, 05, I'm like, you know, they don't understand what I'm holding in my hand. You know, and so all of a sudden I started saying, you know, you see this box with the little red light. You know, you've heard people do that. Well, mm -hmm. I was the one that that that. that figured that one out you know if you ever watch children of grave you'll hear it but you know and, I, and that's what i would say you know explain what you're doing if you're holding a microphone see this black stick i'm holding see this i'm holding i'm not here to harm you if you speak yeah, into yeah. this i might be able to hear you if you're, you're if you're simple keep it to the point and let them know what you're doing you know it's just like you know dealing with a human being you know don't yeah. go in and start talking to them with something they don't understand or they don't have a clue what you're doing you know yeah. To well, the point. back in their day, they probably didn't have periscopes and pyramids right, and right. Uh, K2 meters and sure. all that. So I explain everything I'm doing, and we always tell them we come in love and light. We're not right. here to harm you. We're not here to make you do parlor tricks. All these things are here for communication purposes only. Think um, about that, because back then, you know, here we had this new equipment. Everybody was using it, and it was cool and everything. But uh, you put yourself on the other side of the fence. Okay, I'm a spirit now, <laughs> all right? Yeah. And, you know, and it's like they're, they're, they're putting this thing in my, you know, out here. And, and what's that going to do to me? And what is that, you know? Um, because the majority of the time you're going to be dealing with things that probably weren't around when all this stuff was invented. <laughs> yeah, know? they probably think, are they trying to light my ass up so they can see me? <laughs> it's like common sense to me, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I ain't touching that thing. That might light me up. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> so if you ever go through my stuff and you'd see that I, I, I one year I was given the EP the EVP guy year of the year award. That's why because I was really good at it. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, if you got a location that keeps spitting them out at you, that's great. <laughs> I know that was, that was the <laughs> candy. That was, it was easy. It was it was easy. It was half the battle. You know, <laughs> yeah, that kind of that award was just kind of given to you pretty much. You just like, heard you got to hear some of the EVP. I, I played a few of them for you, you know. I mean, they were always very clear, you know. You know, I think the ones I played for you were Help Me and I Like the Little Boy. And, yeah. uh, and you know, uh, a, a female voice going, it's all right. You know, you know, that's the kind of EVP we would get out. Of, you know, you would have one, you, you would be talking to them. And we have lists of them, you know. And there's, there's some that say, why don't you come and find me, <laughs> you know. And it's like... You know, I listen to them now and think, are were we out of our ever loving mind? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta watch what you ask knowing, for. <laughs> yeah, knowing the haunting that we were in and what it did in the end and what it did to people and everything and what it was capable of doing. You know, we went and looked. Oh, you want me to come and find you? I, I get to be out of my ever loving mind. You know, you it was are. <laughs> now, if you've noticed, I think most of us in the paranormal world ha have ADD to some extent, or OCD, or we or we have insomnia, <laughs> right. or, or some kind of uh, depression, or something like that. All of us have something, uh, and we're all interested in in playing with uh, spirits, and so and figuring out what's up, what's on the other side is why I do it. What, what I, am I looking forward to? You I know? remember there was, you know, we had a newspaper reporter came, and he wanted to he wanted to be in the house because he had heard it was so haunted. And at that time, Helen, who was living in the house at that time, she was a, you, she would call this little boy, and you would see this small shadow come out of the kitchen, walk over, and look like it was sitting in her lap. You know, and it was much later after we realized the stuff. Yeah, I mean, this newspaper reporter had absolutely floored, by the way. He actually became part of the paranormal after the event. You know, oh. he's still a, still a paranormal researcher today, but that was his first experience. And later we used to laugh and we were going, we were out of our mind because God knows what you had sitting in your lap. You know, it was probably not a little boy, you know, you know. But I look back at that stuff, and I, I, you know, and that was that was our learning, that was our our tra training ground, that was where we learned. And wow. I'm like, 
you know, can you imagine learning in the fire that way? No, um, no. But I had a lot of good people back. Training, oh. <laughs> right, I had a lot of good people backing me too, as you know. But uh, um, yes, you did. Um, some of some real heavy hitters. Um, yeah. Which you know, I was uh, when I worked on Shadows on Sixty Six with Brad and Barry, and was uh, honored enough to get to work with Chip Coffee, and now we are actually really good friends. Um, Love Chip. You know, He's always talking about John Zaffis, and when you said, yeah, John Zaffis worked on my case, I'm like, wow. You know, um, John, I've been watching John for a long time, John Zaffis. Uh, Johnny. <laughs> and Chip, Chip goes, hey. I've got my old friend Chip Coffee here. I can't do Zaffis because you can't do Zaffis without cussing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Steven, 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 what's up? <laughs> you know, I just had enough of this field and these people. These people yeah. drive me crazy. I'm yeah. tired. I'm yeah. just tired of the shit. <laughs> just tired of it. Just tired of it. <laughs> you know? I, I love him, though. But, you know, at that point, I mean, I don't know what I would have done without him in my back pocket, really. Saying, you know, you can't. There was one night in, in um, it's kind of, well, we'll talk about it. It was there was one night that um, Helen uh, was under she she was under possession for those that you don't know, and um, yeah, I was I was out trying to drop her off at her daughter's house and it's out in the middle of nowhere in the woods, and she turned on me, and um, she started she started physic got very physical, um, scratching beating and it was like I was like fighting ten men off. You know, I managed to get the car door open on the passenger side, and I took my feet and pushed her out. And I drove away with her screaming at me. But the thing is, is um, I came home that that night, and I, I got in the house. I'm bleeding. I'm bruised. I'm beaten. And I get in the house that night, and I'm, I'm pa I've got the kids up packing their bags. I'm like, that's it. We're out of here. You know, we were headed to L.A. You know, I'm like, we're gone. We're gone. And I, and I, I picked up the phone to call John. And, and John talks about this. John, you know, remembers when you, you, you know, you can, if you ever interview him, you can ask him about it. But it was the most horrible phone call he ever got from, he says he ever got from a client. Because by the time he got to the phone, um, I was so wound up, I was screaming. And all I could do was scream. And it took him a while to get me calmed down enough to say what was going on. And I told him, and I, and I, I told him, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm going. Where are you going? I, I mean, I'm like, I'm not even going to tell you where I'm going. I'm going. And he had to stop and get me to not leave because he knew, and I know now, that had I left, it would just follow me. And it would probably would have even been worse. Um, however, that was the Saturday night. And on Monday was the Monday that um, Helen came with the gun to shoot me in the head. But, you know. Wow. <laughs> and, then I, and then I ended up talking her down from suicide that day. But the strange thing about that was there's a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people don't understand that. We, had got, we, we were so close and gotten to know each other so well that we knew things about each other. And the thing is that she told me she was going to hang herself in the butcher shower of the house. I knew better. Because as soon as I heard that, I knew it wasn't her I was speaking to. Because she was afraid to wear turtlenecks or anything tied around her neck because she was afraid of choking. She used to say, I think in a previous life, I probably somebody probably choked me or I hung. She goes, because that would be the worst way I could ever think of dying. You know, These were conversations you know you have as friends. So when that came up, I knew I wasn't dealing with her. You know, um, There was a lot of other things, too, but uh, I remember that really standing out and that's you know as I'm trying to talk her out of suicide that day um, that's what what really went through my mind and what I did is I told her I said her daughter was standing outside of the car and I, I told her I said look at your daughter look look at your child's face look what you're doing and at that moment she broke down and started crying and when she started crying I realized you know I had this I had one phone one and I had a cell phone the other talking to her daughter I said get her out of the car you know, as soon as she started crying, and, and you know, and that's when they were able to open the car and get her out, yeah. and uh, you know, and able to get her help. But um, it was amazing that it was the love of the family that actually broke through the demonic. Keep that in mind as well. Yeah, that that poor lady. I mean, from wanting to kill you to wanting to kill her husband to trying to kill her husband to, I mean, she went through complete hell. 
And she was their complete help. She didn't and you know, stop. Go. <laughs> and you know, and a lot of people, you know, at first I thought, you know, because when I first took her, I was taking her out with me. I thought, well, people are going to be afraid of her because they're not going to understand her. But that wasn't the case, you know. I, I took her to Iowa like three or four years ago, and uh, she, she, she spoke with me in front of a crowd, which was really great because she had never done that before. And I had turned around after it was over, and I was talking to somebody. I said, where's Linda? And they said, over there. And I turned around, and there she is talking to people and answering the question. She's, people are coming up to her, and she's grabbing them and hugging them, and, you know, they just, just had to touch her. And it was like yeah. anywhere you took her, she was like that. You know, they just, I, I, we went to an opening of a, of a, a movie this past year where we, we, we spoke at the movie theater for her. Last Exorcism, too. She loves scary movies, by the way. So, you know, but the kids would come up to her, and, you know, I turn around, and there's these, these kids surrounding her, and she's laughing and hugging them, and, and, no, and never at any time was anybody ever afraid of her they always understood her and they always understood that she came from this sweet sweet person and it drove her to the monster that she became yeah. for a while but then they understood that she became back to herself and it, right. it was it always got me that you know uh and she was always there and the amount of people she helped in a lot of different ways um you know we you know she died right yeah um, I she, do. Got, she I do. died on friday um in a she she had a heart attack. Is is how it was. It was instant. No, there was no pain or anything. No pain, and she went but quickly. She went quickly. Um, but the thing is, is that I wanted to scream from the rooftops. You know, you don't. You know, paranormal. You don't realize what we lost there. Yeah. You know, we we really lost one of our true pioneers. I mean, this is somebody that you know picked herself up by the bootstraps and says, if nobody else is going to help us, we're going to do it on our own, which yeah. wasn't a great idea. But the, the fact of the matter is, is, you know, in how many people she helped and how many people were inspired by her. And it's like, you know, in all the different things that she did. And I just wanted to scream because, you know, she, she's not, she wasn't out there in the forefront as much anymore because of her health. But we really, really lost somebody on the equivalents of a Lorraine Warren or somebody like that, where she's concerned, she just wasn't. She just wasn't out there as much as the rest of them. But you know, she was a person that really changed lives. And what more can we do than that? Exactly. I mean, her her going through what she went through, and actually, you writing about it. Both of you actually are, are helping a lot of people that are going through the same. <laughs> I, re I remember when I wrote the book. I got to tell you this. I wrote the book. <laughs> And you know, now remember, she doesn't remember a lot of the things she did. And I yeah. got a memory like an elephant. I'll remember what you say two years from now. I oh, mean, that conversation, you know. And uh, so she she doesn't, you know, so I give her the book, you know, to read before it's really majorly published. And she and she she reads it, and, I, and, and she calls me, and I'm nervous wreck because she's reading the book. And I'm thinking, you know, did I go too far? Did I tell too much? And so I answer the phone, and she goes, Stephen? And I said, yeah. She goes, I'm not feeling very well. And I said, I'm like, oh, my God, it's putting her back under. And she's, all of a sudden, she started cackling. And I said, you bitch. I'm like, you know, I mean, how dare you? And she, I said, it's to come to find out. She goes, I know there was things that it filled in for that she needed filled in. And she loved it. She loved it. Um, and, and it was like, you know, you, you want, and, and she, she had an understanding of it. And. Um, and she was, thought it was really important that we tell it. And, you know, and that was like telling on yourself where she's concerned. I mean, um, you know, because, I mean, the things that she did do were, were pretty horrific. I mean, you know, just the last Tuesday we were out in a, and she said, you know, I wish I could remember everything I did during those blackouts. She goes, I wonder where all the bodies are buried. And then she started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> She well, was uh, God bless her, and uh, I hope she she's resting in peace. And I'm, I'm sorry sure that you lost her. Um, I, I lost somebody huge. He you was, did, but you also him. gained another angel watching over you too. You got to remember Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you know she's going to have your back for sure. Right. <laughs> there to pick her up every time. Well, the funny thing is, is she always told me she goes, you know, uh, if I die, 
before old well, before old um, Mr. Winters or, or her real name. She goes, yeah. they better hope that they die before me or I'll be there ha haunting them for the rest of their damn life. <laughs> and you know, since she's died, none of us have had any dreams or anything, so we're sure she's busy. Oh, yeah. That'd be really funny if she jacked with uh, with Mr. Winters with a, with a real scary <laughs> clown and crap. Yeah, be... <laughs> I, I, imagine she, I imagine she's probably over there right now. So. Hey, Max! <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know I, I you know I do have a list of a couple of people I'm gonna jack with whenever it happens to me. I do have a couple <laughs> people the on fish. List. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not in a bad way. I'm just gonna make them think they're losing their crap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I saw that you have the other book, and I didn't know uh, really about it called Crazy. Um, can't believe I didn't know about it since it sounds like it's so me. Um, I wrote it for the paranormal. That's a that's strictly. I wrote that for a book strictly for the paranormal, but it was funny because people outside of the paranormal uh, picked it up and love it just as much as the paranormal people. So I think that's really good. But it really was written for the paranormal people because I got tired of us uh, treating. I mean, when I say psychic, I'm talking true psychic or sensitive because we do have them. Um, I was tired of the, us treating them like the red-haired stepchild. Um, in our investigations, you know, we're, we're y'all using them, but nobody wants to admit they use them for one. And, you know, and, and another thing, they're really our profilers, just like the FBI has profilers on murder cases. Uh, yeah. What do you think our psychics do? They're our profilers, and they do have run a very important part of it. So Crazy was taking them and taking them and taking them into a case and having them profile a case which could later be proved through different types of evidence. There was three types of evidence that had to prove one point for it to make it into the story. But it was that was the point. And it was written for the paranormal. It was almost a shame on you to a lot of the people in the paranormal who feel that uh, they're better than the psychic world. So, yeah, I wish I had psychic abilities like, like, oh, me too. like Dakota or like right. Chip or... Teresa Caputo or who you know Kim Russo any of those people I mean right. they amaze me <laughs> and I would love to have abilities even a little bit I know I have I know we all do have psychic abilities right. we just have to hone in and 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 whatever tap into them right. um, I, I don't even know what you would call what I have but uh, I've been talking to a couple of people about it and uh, I don't even know that I want to see things that some psychics and mediums do uh, get shown sometimes. Uh, the, my co-founder of Fear actually has abilities as well. And, you know, she doesn't get out there and talk about it a whole lot. But, you know, and I don't use her. People go, use her as a piece of equipment. No, she's a human being. <laughs> and um, I'm not going to treat her as a piece of equipment. If she gets something, she gets something. I'm not going to, you know, are, are you getting anything? I mean, I'll ask her that, like, in the mid thing. I mean, are you having any feelings or anything? You know, and I don't sit there and hound on her, you know. And other people, like, use them, and it just irritates me. I, you know, it's like I never ask Chip, okay, can you read me or any of the, you know, when I take her on an investigation, when we go on an investigation, I should say, and we go into a location and, you know, if she's feeling something great, you know, she may say something, she may not, but um, they are a very big part. The validation that they give um, is amazing at times. Just like with Chip and Galena, he was, he, we didn't tell him anything. It wasn't like a paranormal state where we'd hold him in the in the you know hotel with blindfolds on and all that stuff, but we just didn't tell him anything. I um, probably enjoyed the blindfolds so. though. Yeah. Tell him I said so. Okay. You gotta use those scarves for something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he sees something else, but he just picked up on so much. And then you know when Lisa Martin, you know, no, you know who she is. She's awesome as well. Yeah. She is awesome. She, she validated everything that he said, and I mean, it even shocked him, you know, even a bit. And uh, I love psychics, and I think they're very important uh, in our field. I really do. Now, I don't like when some of them are supposed to have abilities and don't, but... There's a question, yes. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be, sh you know, it'll, it'll, it'll come but out... It all it comes out in the wash eventually. You know, it you does, find, doesn't it? 
Yeah, it really does. But, you know, there's a lot of teams out there. How many teams do you think are out there that go up to the, the, the psychic sensitives in their team and go, where do you think we should put our equipment? <laughs> however, however, they, they, you ask them, do you use psychics? Oh, no, 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 no. You know, it's yeah. like it's, that, that, that aggravated me to no end. Yeah. You know, you know, and it's and, and to be able to take a case and to take their 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 impressions and then follow it up with evidence was was a tremendous amount of fun, by the way. And to find yes. out how accurate they were was kind of spooky at times. Um, yes. You know, especially this one character in Crazy, which he was a hermit and he lived in the bottom of this this truck stop restaurant. And, you know, and it turned out that they gave me information on him, and he ended up being true. And when I first got the information from them, I'm like, Hermit, bottom of a restaurant? Are you guys kidding me? He the threw trouble. his own, yeah, he threw his own feces at people, really. But you know what? Every single bit of it was true, was factual, proven. It happened. The guy lived there, you know, and it, you know, and it would just blew me away. Just absolutely blew me away. Mr. Bates. <laughs> Someone Mr. in the chat room said Mr. Bates. Who, who said that? Who said that? Because that is his name, Mr. Bates, yes. Um, it's, uh, it says Brain. Oh, Mr. Brain's here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he's, he's been saying a bunch of fun stuff. Um, yeah, Brain's a good guy. Brain's a good guy. <laughs> so you have a new book that I cannot freaking wait for, and I can't believe I'm even saying that because I don't read a whole lot. Um. So it's making me really Jones for the next one because, um, it, it, I mean, if it's a continuation or a sequel to to the Uninvited, I can't wait. So Blessed Are the Wicked. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that one. Well, you know, I, I one thing that has always bothered me, and I had a, a Dakota Lawrence, who is like an adoptive son of me of mine. I was real clo I was real close to his grandmother, and his grandmother said, "You got to write another book." Um, on this because she loved the uninvited by the way and, and she was she's psychic and I and I told her no and she said yeah you do so I started writing this book and sure enough I needed to write another book um, there was a lot that needed to be told there's a lot of questions that you might have coming out of the uninvited that get answered in the next book but you know a lot of people think that once you close the door on a haunted house the haunting's over which is not which is not the case Lorraine Warren here told us at the end when we closed the door to the house and walked away, and we, we thought, okay, we're free and clear. Lorraine at that time said to us, she, she said, um, no, it's not over by a long shot. You know, and I didn't understand what she meant at that point. Um, but later on, it became quite clear that Lorraine knew what she was talking about, that's for sure. Um, because it's not over, you know, you have to deal, you have to live life a little differently. You have to deal with things a little differently. And, you know, um, the activity continued up until 2011 when I when I actually died on the table. Um, that's when the activity stopped. A week before I went into up to, a week or two before I went into surgery for my heart, which I had open heart surgery. Um, we were finding the kitchen doors open and in drawers, everything in the kitchen open, and we would find butcher knives lined up in the middle of the floor. Um, you know, which that was the psychological thing you did to you. It would mess with your mind. You know, so, you know, yeah. can you imagine going into surgery and this thing's winding up butcher knives and you're going, am I going to live through this or what? You know, you know that's, <laughs> the kind of, that's the kind of stuff that we would, you know, that we live through. And everybody, single one of us that have lived through these type of hauntings go through this kind of stuff. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And you got to know how to live with it and deal with it. Uh, a lot of the kids that were in the union house. During that time that we're um, helping Helen try to find the gun and that sort of thing to go kill her husband, um, out of the group of those kids, five of them are dead. Uh, one of them died. Yeah, one of them died of a heroin overdose. One of them died in um, a fire with their two children just this past April. Um, you know, uh, one of them didn't die. However, he passed his bar exam for his uh, uh, bar, and he. Um, he had an accident like the next day and was paralyzed from the neck down. Um, there's one that's dying of cancer right now. And then there's, a, you know, there was one that's husband uh, took a, a shotgun to her head and blew her head off. You know, um, wow. Coincidence. Maybe. No, I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. I don't think so. It's, it seems like, you know, this, this dark cloud came over and it came and it stuck with us and it kind of hung with us. And um, people were losing their lives, and there was a lot of babies being, you know, 
you know, oh. they would never see in the light of day, they would never be oh. born at the same time. I mean, um, that was going on too. Helen, Helen, he had went through a series of things where she would be good for a period of time and then she would go back under and then be good, you know, so it was the monster was always there and we knew it was always there and it took a while for that to, to live. Um, so there was a lot there and then, you know, there's the history of the house and uh, the land and all of that that needed to be told. Um, some of Mr. Winter's stuff, you know, why is he doing what he's doing? I got a good indication. I had a stalker that was stalking me for a while. Um, that's in there. Um, but blessed are the wicked itself. And I know I said that this the other night on Eric's show. Um, people look at the title and go, man, that's a scary title. Well, it's not. It, it doesn't mean to be. Um, because at the end of the book, you find out that blessed are the wicked. I don't mind saying it. You know, I'm not ruining anything for anybody. Blessed are the wicked is to be able to look at all the things that have happened to you and everyone that has done things to you and things that have done things to you. You know, those who hurt me, hit me, hated me, beat me. You know, the things that try to drag me down, to try to destroy my life. Those are the things that um, deserve more. To deserve a blessing more than anything else. And that blessing needs to, that asking for that blessing needs to come from you, and in only that way can you forgive that and survive and move on. And that's what blessed are the wicked is. It's a blessing for the wicked, meaning the blessing for those that have hurt me. Oh, that's I can't wait. I cannot wait to read it. And I, I really appreciate you being on my show. I was so excited for, for you to be on my show. And I can't I, wait to talk to you. I miss you. <laughs> I know. I, I can't wait to see you again. I'm hoping that you'll be a. Uh, at one of the new uh, conferences during the first of the year, um, I'm actually going to go to Savannah, Georgia, February 1st. Uh, uh, that's my favorite that place. Conference. Huh? Oh, that's my favorite place. Oh, Love. well, I can't wait. Uh, I'm going to go with Chip and check it out. So I'm excited about that. But for those of, of you who need to find Stephen's books and uh, his works, you need to uh, let him tell you how to find Can you let them know how to find you, Stephen? Any of the, even any of the books or the works you can get at any major bookstore, Amazon, Kindle, Nook, all of that. Okay, so, you know, you go shopping and you'll find it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, to reach me, it's easy. Uh, Facebook, it's hard because... Selena found out that I matched the friends out a long time ago, and uh, <laughs> I have to wait and rotate them in and out. But yeah. uh, <laughs> but the easiest way to get me is to go to my website, which is Stephen A with the, like Apple Stephen A Lachance com, and you go there and there's a contact tab there where you can contact me if you want me to come speak or something. You you contact Annette. she's there. Um, she's she's the one who books everything, and she is awesome. You couldn't ask for a better uh, PR management type person than True. her. Um, True. She's great. She will not. She will not make you wait. If you send her an email, she's back on top of it right away. And that's one of the reasons that I got in that because I the the person I had before was not doing the job they were supposed to be doing. So Annette, man, she's on top of it, and she's sweet. Definitely. She's a sweetheart too. <laughs> she definitely is. Well, thank you so much, and um, I, I'm gonna make you sign uh, my book when I see you next time because uh... you know, you know, <laughs> I'll see I'll see you, you know, no later than um, I'll see you no later than April for sure. Sounds great. Sounds great. Right. Thank you so much. And again, um, I'm sorry for your loss, and I'm, I'll be praying for you guys. All right. Love you, kiddo. Love you, too. All right. Thanks bye -bye. a lot. Well, that was the awesome Stephen Lachance. Um, you got to get his book. I'm telling you, for someone who doesn't read, uh, the book is amazing. I've barely been able to put it down. I've only got like 10 pages left. But real quick, I want to thank my sponsors, Syntex Roof Systems. They're on it. If you'll just uh, give them a call, any problems, I'm sure a lot of us in Texas will have issues with their roofs, so give them a call and they'll hook you up. Flanagan's Party Barn, Wes and Wendy down there. If you want a party, reception, whatever, reunion, they'll hook you up. Just give them a call. Ace Saba Products, if you want to get your skinny on, check with Barry Harger. He'll hook you up. And Able Towing. They will uh, come get you if you are stuck on the side of the highway, which a lot of us are in Texas right now. I, I don't know how many cars and trucks are on the sides of the freeways, but it's pretty bad. Uh, if you want to look up, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to look up fear, look up fear on uh, Facebook at Fear Paranormal Society. You can also look up my show page, Close to Death, with Selena Rome. 
And you can also find our website, fearparanormal.wix.com slash fear dash one. And next week, we have Al Franklin, who was a reschedule for the Veterans Day special. He will be um, appearing, or actually being my guest, not appearing. He will be on next Sunday at 7 Central, so tune in for that. Hope to see you then. Have a great week. Peace out.